And good evening and welcome to Newsmax Prime. I'm Miranda Khan in tonight for J.D. Hayworth, who is off. Great to have you with us. Of prime interest tonight, combating terrorism. As the FBI continues to connect the dots after the worst terror attack on U.S. soil since 9-11, the debate rages on about immigration and surveillance as they pertain to national security. Donald Trump spoke at a rally in Georgia earlier today, and he made it clear that we need to gain a tighter grip on both for our country may face dire consequences if it doesn't. We aren't vigilant and we aren't smart. And we have to go and we have to maybe check respectfully the mosques and we have to check other places because this is a problem that if we don't solve it, it's going to eat our country alive. And now for this quick reminder, we will be taking your calls for the next hour. The number to call is 1-877-NEWSMAX. Again, that's 1-877-639-7629. Call in with a short question or comment, and we'll put you live on air. Now for much more on this story, we are pleased to be joined via Skype from Palm City, Florida, former U.S. Secret Service agent Dan Bongino. Dan is the author of the book, The Fight, a Secret Service agent's inside account of security failings and the political machine. Also joining us via Skype from Los Angeles, political commentator Michael Reagan. Michael is the author of the book, Lessons My Father Taught Me, The Strength, Integrity, and Faith of Ronald Reagan. You can find and follow Michael Reagan on Twitter at Reagan World. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. Happy to be here. Now, we'll get more into Donald Trump's comments in just a moment, what he was talking about with the mosque. Uh, but first, there are some new developments tonight to a story that we first told our viewers about last night here on Newsmax Prime, where Russian hackers reportedly stole hundreds of pages of opposition research on Donald Trump by hacking into the DNC's computer server. Now, according to our parent website, Newsmax.com, some of those files were released online today. The document titled The Donald Trump Report includes an attack on the presumptive Republican presidential nominee's character and record, plus examples of Trump changing his stance on saying something false or inflammatory. First, let's tackle the political angle. Michael, who is this more damaging to, Trump or the DNC? By the time the election is here, nobody will remember the hacking at the DNC. It's not like Watergate you know, went on with the President of the United States you know, involved in this at all. It'll be forgotten by the time the election happens, probably be forgotten by next week because another story will step all over this one. Is anybody surprised that Russia is hacking into the DNC? I'm sure they're hacking into a lot of places and we know that they're hacking, like China is hacking. By the way, like we are hacking, it's part of the game that goes on in the world that we live in today. Well, let's talk about national security. Uh, Dan, you're an expert on this issue. Uh, how telling is this that people from another country, uh, you heard Michael Reagan mention China, but we're talking about Russia here, that they were able to hack into the computers from the DNC? You know, it's very troubling, Miranda. I have a number of friends, former Secret Service agents, who are now in the private sector handling uh, computer security. The Secret Service monitors the Electronic Crimes Task Forces, so they're very familiar with this. I have one friend specifically, shall remain nameless, but uh, he's he does pen testing, penetration testing into companies' networks. And I've had very long, detailed conversations with him where he told me, you have no idea how bad it is, that people just don't take this stuff seriously. You would think, Miranda, after the Sony hack, that corporations and even entities like the DNC would be a little more serious and a little more vigorous about their firewalls. But according to him and a number of the folks I talked to, the experts, they're just not. This is a, in, a, in a triage priority of issues. This is at the bottom, computer security. It's really sad. Well, you know, which some is point I, Which is the point I was making. Yeah. It, it's a very serious issue, but not taken seriously enough to really rise to the top of the hit parade when it comes to presidential politics. Yeah, Dan, though, some have speculated that this is kind of Russia's way of trying to influence the American political system. Your take on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Michael on this one. If, if, if this is their way of influencing the American political presidential process, this was a pretty poor way of doing it. I mean, 
What, you're going to release an oppo file on Trump? I mean, listen, th there's been an oppo file ongoing for a year right now. You haven't dented the man's uh, approval ratings at all. I, I, to me, that's that's kind of weak. I, I can see it happening. I don't put anything past the Russians, but yeah, I'm with Michael. This this is a this is a a big nothing burger in the bigger scheme of presidential politics. Well, we don't know what effect this will have on the polls, but you were talking about approval ratings. A new ABC News Washington Post poll shows that both presumptive nominees have unfavorable ratings at an all-time low. Donald Trump stands at 70 percent and Hillary Clinton at 55 percent. Michael, with these types of unfavorable ratings, is a Republican convention at risk of a potential mess? Yeah, it's probably going to be a mess. And the Democrat convention might be an equal mess, too, seeing how the burn doesn't yet want to get out. I tweeted earlier today at Reagan World, I said, the November election's really simple. You're either anti-gun or anti-Muslim. It's really that simple. That's the vote coming up in November, and that's how they're affixing it at this point in, in time. And so the Republican convention could be very bad, uh, depending on what happens at the convention. There's a lot of movement going now going on within, within Twitter, within the social media. Gosh, maybe we need to find someone else to run. Maybe something needs to happen at the convention, but if that happens, then you're going to have the Trump people go absolute, absolutely ballistic. Uh, Dan, Hillary Clinton registered her worst rating in public life with this new poll. Could this signal a shift among voters that the people just don't trust her approach? You know, Miranda, think about this, right? What is the trust about Hillary Clinton? This could be the worst nominee, the most unqualified moral or ethical nominee for president in the modern history of the United States. How we've managed to move from uh, Ronald Reagan to Hillary Clinton um, is a national embarrassment. We have a woman who lied to the, you know, the parents and the spouses and the families of our four patriots who died in Benghazi. We have a woman who created her own set of rules in the State Department for email forfeited our national security secrets over to foreign entities. I have that from a very good source, by the way. Uh, it, it's it, This is an embarrassment. I mean, for all the negative talk about Trump, and, and listen, I, I get it. There are a lot of people mm -hmm. out there who are very passionate about this issue. I mean, Donald Trump's floor is Hillary Clinton's ceiling. I mean, that, that, this is a clear wow. choice to me. That's definitely one way to put it. Let's see what a Tracy from Ohio thinks about this topic. Thanks for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. What's your question or comment for our panel? Uh, well, I just think about uh, how the media portrays Trump and how they're saying how they're, well, they're trying to make it look like everybody's against Trump when actually it's the opposite. There's far, far uh, few that is against Trump than most of us are for him. And they're just trying to turn around, and, and I believe that they're manipulating the polls here with having Clinton ahead of Trump, because uh, we definitely need security here in this country, because we're all aware of what's going on, and um, anybody w w with common sense knows having open borders, so forth, and the security of what's, what's been happening here, it's, it's all wrong. It's off the wall, and, 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 they're, and they're, they won't even mention radical Islam or even say it or just say terrorist and then they'll portray it and say, well, you know, he said it, he mentioned it, but he didn't actually say or call it radical terrorism. Right. And but that's, I, and that's just, been in the headlines all week long, whether or not to use the term radical Islamic terrorism. Michael, I'm going to let you respond to what Tracy had to say. Is the media uh, playing against Trump? Well, let's face it, I mean, the media, the dominant media, mainstream media has never really been in the corner of the Republican Party, whether it was my father, Ronald Reagan, or Barry Goldwater, or George Bush, or whomever. So get over it. Uh, what you have to do is have a message that transcends the dominant media and gets to the public, if you will. And Donald Trump would be best not to say things that force his own party to take a stand to not agree with some of the statements that he's making. And, and, and that's one of those self-inflicted wounds onto Donald Trump. He needs to get away from that and not run more towards it to, to get his base enlivened because the base will not elect him. 
He needs a larger group of people than just the base that went out during the primary process. Well, let's see if Delmar from McKansas agrees with you. Delmar, welcome to Newsmax Prime. What's your question or comment? Well, I don't agree with him on that at all. Uh, it's 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 the nobody in the Republican Party, the old mainline mainstay, the old people that's been in there forever. They're not going to do anything but just get along with everything the way it is. We're we're needing to change because the country's in trouble, and these died in the wolves don't know what they're talking about. Dan, I'm going to let you respond to what Delmar just said. Do you, are we, is it time for a change? Yeah, it's absolutely time for a change. I mean, think about what's going on right now. We have we, we have individuals like your caller here who live in real America, get their hands dirty and go to work every day. And they're looked at uh, like the great unwashed by the foie gras eating, bow tie wearing crowd in Washington, D.C. You know, for all the complaints about about Trump, I listen, I get it. I understand there are some issues I've had some complaints about myself. The Republican Party has to understand, like, we brought this on ourselves, Miranda. We had an opportunity to do things, to do substantial things, or at a minimum, even if we couldn't pass legislation due to raw numbers, to at least take a principled stand. And on nearly every major issue, we have taken a big, fat L for a loss. We brought this on ourselves, and I understand their frustration. And, and you know what? The Republican Party in D.C. better wake up and listen to people like your last caller because he's one of millions of people out there who feel exactly the same way. Well but the put. other side of the coin, as bad as, bad as it is, right. and as angry as we are at the Republicans for you know, not doing what we wanted them to do or what they said they would do if they got elected, Hillary Clinton would be an absolute abomination to the United States of America. So, and we're going to have to leave it there, gentlemen. We are running out of time, but we appreciate your commentary and we appreciate our viewers for calling in. Please continue your calls. We'll be right back after this.